So somebody fun to talk about um, is Natty. Uh, <laughs> I just get going when I say her name. Um, I can't remember what year it was Natty came in. I'd been on the road for a little while now. And um, I remember her being around here and there, you know, and then she got called up for good. And uh, <laughs> we kind of got off on a, a rough start. Like, I don't even remember exactly how it happened. I remember the first day that she was there we had, and, and I laugh about it now, uh, and we can always tease each other, but um, I remember the first first day Natty was there and we had a production meeting, and uh, at the end of the production meeting she raises her hand, and like at this point like I'm still even nervous to talk in production meetings, people don't normally say anything, but I didn't know her personality then, but like it's totally Natty. So she raises her hand and she just wanted to give a tip to everybody about how to keep self tanner on longer, you know, to use this moisturizer before you spray tan. And <laughs> at the time I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like she's got nerve. Like how, I wish I had some of that, you know, I wish like I had an ounce of that in me to just be like, yeah, I got something to say. And so that was the first, the very first, um, first encounter. And then, um, something, something got apparently all over the internet about her and I arguing and trying to teach her how to wrestle and all this other stuff, which completely was false as many things on the internet are. And, um, but apparently word got around and it was just like, there was nobody else by the ring. So it was one of those deals, like who is, who, you know, feels the need to go to the internet and start this stuff. And it was kind of, it was just kind of shaky. So it was like, what, or shady, I should say. It was kind of like, what in the, you know, what in the world is going on? So it was just kind of unspoken. There was like a little bit of tension, like, you know, I I don't know if she thought I did it or if I thought she did it or or whatever the case may be, but it was just kind of, I don't know. We had two very, very (laughs) different personalities. Like I'm more reserved and um, soft-spoken as far as, you know, being in crowds or I have to get warmed up to people before I open up to them, and she's completely opposite. And um, so you know, a a few weeks went by. Anyway, we ended up sitting down talking about it and, uh, went from there and we, we actually became, we ended up becoming really good friends. She, uh, I mean, it's just, I look back at that and I'm like, that's typical Natty. She just is always saying the most off the wall stuff, doing the goofiest things. And, uh, you know, whether she's coming up and Tommy Dreamer can attest to this, that it's always, hi, nice to see you. It's nice to see you again or calling somebody a wombat, or I can't remember what she used to always call me, um, but she's crazy, and uh, and I love that about her, um, and she will, you know, tell you she's uh, the most sane one in her family, and, <laughs> and you know, that's, uh, that's just a story within itself. She, um, I've always had fun with the hearts, um, obviously respect them and their legacy, and, uh, you know, all the years of entertainment they gave us and continue to give us through through Natty and, you know, Harry and TJ being raised and, and trained in the dungeon. And, um, you know, I had some fun with the hearts at WrestleMania. I don't know what number it was, and I can't even remember where it was, to be honest with you. Uh, but it was when our, it was when the hearts, Brett and Natty was in the match, and TJ, it was a match with Vince. I don't remember who else was in it. See, there's my bad memory again. But, um, yeah, I had a, a fun experience with <laughs> with some of her family members, which she always reminds me about every time I see her. Um, and I know this is, a, like, hard to follow because, you know, I'm a private person. I never dish out all the details. But uh, Natty in general, I mean, obviously she's a great worker. That is beyond words. She's constantly showing up to a ring. Like, you know when Natty's at the building because she comes running down the ramp, slides in the ring, and tries to leg pick somebody or... Uh, you know, take them down in some form or fashion, which is uh, awesome. Um, and so, gosh, it was you know it was pretty late in my career. Um, right before, I think it was the last storyline before Layla and I broke up. Uh, we had the storyline with Natty, and um, I can't remember what our tagline was with was with her. What did we? I don't know. I know we messed with you know uh, her family legacy. I can't remember what all we said about her in our local ways but we had she was definitely fun to work with she's total team player um she would come up with the craziest stuff about herself that she would want us to use she's like hey you know why don't y'all say this about me and we're like really you know oh oh, we did her dad's goatee thing you know and of course she showed us 
all that. She gave us other ways to impersonate her dad or Brett or, or her. And it was great because she's the one feeding us material, just showing the type of, you know, business she's willing to do. She knows what's good for the business and uh, knows that it's just a character on TV. And so we really had fun with her. We could trust, you know, that the ideas we were pitching off one another weren't going to be automatically shut down because she was going and saying something else you know we really worked together to come up with with storylines uh to keep things going you know fighting for every pay-per-view or fighting to get on tv and i think we did a good job that was that was fun the matches were always fun she's always willing to do something you know above and beyond um you know she got it she got it that you know we're constantly going to pick on her but at some point we were going to get our butts handed to us I don't think Lake Cool got our butts handed to us often enough to be completely honest so and sometimes we had to fight for that whether people believe it or not it's like we are shutting people down left and right why aren't they calling us out why aren't they talking about all of our flaws like you know we claim to be flawless why aren't these people getting getting this stuff in on us I, I still don't understand that but um so our program ended I think it was at that that TLC and I remember it was the week before and Fit Finley came up to us and said y'all got a tables match we're like shut up you know Fit was always he's a he's a jokester as it is we're like you are you're lying Fit there's no way we have a tables match I mean we didn't even pitch a tables match because we didn't even think it was possible that we would get a tables match at that point on TV it was um you know, PG, and we don't want our girls wrestling like the guys, and oh, your punches look too good, you can't do any punches, you can't do any kick, you know, like it was all these guidelines. So we definitely didn't think we were going to get a tables match. So lo and behold, Fit was telling the truth, um, and here we are a week out, like excited as can be, excited and nervous because one, I mean, this is the coolest thing ever because it's the first Divas uh, table tables match, and two, I know that me and Layla are going to be the ones going through the table, deservingly, you know, deservingly so. So, um, we had rehearsal the next weekend, the night before the pay-per-view, to kind of put some ideas together and go through some stuff. And, oh my gosh, you can ask Natty. I've never had a near-death experience until that night. It was so super scary. I remember I was going to pull Natty up in the corner for my faith breaker off the top turnbuckle. Somehow... I'm sitting on the top turnbuckle. I pull her up, and we both go to tumble over the outside. So, like, I'm all I'm thinking about is protecting her. But I'm looking down, and my head is about to land on the apron and, like, break my neck, literally. My toes are curled over the top rope, just holding on so that I can try to hold on to both of us. I can see in slow motion Randy Orton was, was ringside. He's running over to help. The look on Fitz's face, he's across the ring and can't help. And then R and Anderson was sitting there, too. And literally, like... We, we seriously almost died. It was absolutely terrifying. Now, did it stop us from doing it? No. I figured, hey, that can't possibly happen twice, right? No. So um, we we definitely shared a moment that night. Um, it was very, very scary. Uh, I remember fighting like crazy for Natty to get the spotlight in that match because um, not everybody was fighting for that. And um, I thought, you know, she has helped us and made us you know, throughout this whole storyline, we've been picking on her. She should be the one that pushes us through the table. She should be the one that gets her hand raised. And she should be the one that puts Slay Cool to shame. I mean, she deserves this. And it was like this hard, hard battle. And, you know, Fit was on our side. He's like, you're absolutely right. You know, Natty deserves this. This is this. That was her moment. And I don't think it would have been fair for anybody to take that away from her or for anybody to be, you know, to try and take that away from her. So, you know, we came up with a creative ending and, um, you know, Natty was going to push us off through the table. So come pay-per-view night, now a little sore from our near-death experience already, a little nervous about going through the table. I mean, I have all these emotions and, and you know, and absolutely excited beyond words that we're making history. Um, but I remember going out there and it's the moment for Leigh and I to, <laughs> to take the leap of faith and uh, so Natty pushes us off. Here we go through the tables and nothing happens. And I know y'all all saw that, but oh my gosh, I could not believe we just hit this table and we apparently didn't weigh enough for the thing to break. And I remember Jamie Noble earlier that day, he, he uh, I can't remember who he said it to, maybe Fit, maybe 
Johnny, I don't remember who he said it to, but we were there, and he says, now, you do think they weigh enough together to break the table, right? And everybody's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's going to be no problem. They're going to go right through it. And lo and behold, of course, we don't. And here we are stuck on the table. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I look up, and we're like, just jump, just jump. And the ref tells Natty, just jump. So she's going up. It was awesome feeling. I'm actually getting chills talking about it because I remember the crowd just going crazy for her climbing up to the turnbuckle. <laughs> and I look up, and I'm literally... You know, I'm double the leap of the table. Layla's laid up on it perfectly. My head and legs are hanging off. And uh, here she goes. We look up. She's flying through the air and lands straight on us. Rolls over my head. Rolls over Layla's head. I'm like laughing and crying at the same time. And uh, I, I don't think we could have planned it any better. It was one of those things where, thank the good Lord above, the table didn't break because the finish was even better than we could have ever planned. So, uh... That was definitely one of the, the, the most fun experiences with Natty. We always had fun overseas. I think she and I always had really, really good good matches together. She, uh, I still give her grief to this day because she's, you know, the one. I claim that she's the one who actually broke my toe. I mean, obviously it wasn't her fault. We were in the ring together, but <laughs> she she gets, I call, her, I call her neurotic Natty because she gets all panicked over everything. So during that match, I was going to do a wheelbarrow off over and she was going to German suplex me backwards but something happened and we didn't get any air my, my legs caught underneath me and that's when I ended up breaking my toe and tearing the joint capsule and all that junk that led me into a walking boot so anyway we go backstage and we played we went with the story for like I don't even know how long we just said you know it was her fault and of course she'd always oh my gosh I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and Fit would be playing along about how bruised my leg was and how tore up my toe was and how I was in the walking boot because of her it was just fun to mess with her because we love her and uh you know I think she always knew we were messing with her but she still always played along and we had fun so you know every week that I had my walking boot on I'd send a picture to her like seriously I'm still in this thing you know thanks Natty but uh she's fun to mess with she's she's a she's got a good soul she's a good soul um great wrestler and I'm glad to call her a, a good friend.